Hello, all you brothers and Pegasus sisters. I am Silver Quill, welcoming you to the MBS show. It's time to don your helmets and put on your flame retardant undies because we're about to talk about a very controversial comic, at least from our perspective. Issue 30 of My Little Pony Friends Forever. And joining me in this adventure is podcaster extraordinaire and planeswalker Norman Sanzo. Hi, Norman Sanzo here. I like this comic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Uh, hang on, I'm gonna wait for your eye to stop twitching. <laughs> and joining us is also a true gem in the Brody fandom, Sapphire Heart Song. I will burn you alive if you actually like this comic. So, Norman, come with me. We're going to Tartarus. I don't care if it's a different opinion, you're going to hell. A true gem. <laughs> And yes, given the uh, rather extreme reactions, you can tell that we might have some strong opinions on this comic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, then I, I guess we should dive right into it with first a quick summation. In this issue of Friends Forever, Twilight Sparkle goes to the Crystal Empire to visit her sister-in-law, Cadence. And incidentally, her biological brother is there, too. And But something is bugging Cadence. And if it's left unaddressed it could put the whole of the Crystal Empire in danger. So let us find out what's up with Cadence, this ish comic issue. But first, let's figure out what's up with us. Norman, what are your first thoughts on this? Oh, my first impression of this comic was... Hmm, I, I can remember it like it was yesterday. I bought the comic, read it in bed like I usually do, and straightforward, I got a feeling that Silver's going to hate it. <laughs> 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 yep. <laughs> And I kept reading, and it's like, ah, okay, okay. After finish reading it, it's like, yeah, it has problems here and there, but it was not bad. Like, come on, it's not that bad. The ending was pretty okay, rush, but it was okay. And rereading it, well, let's let's just go for later on. Yeah, that, that's my first impressions. My first impressions, it was okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right, all right, Safi, without threatening bodily harm, if possible. Oh boy. How do I start this? Cadence is a friggin' spoiled brat throughout this comic. And the sad part is, the premise within itself could have been really, really interesting. Cadence trying to spice up her own life and her perception as seen throughout the kingdom. Like, you know, make her not as boring as we've perceived her to be throughout the years with this comic. But... Cadence, in general, in a nutshell, acts like a bit of a spoiled brat. Oh, they don't like me. They just think I'm pretty. Oh, can you do something to change that? No, I just want to cry and moan and weep. Oh, okay. And the sad part is, her emotions are apparently tied to, you know, it's tied to that one artifact that is seen throughout the Crystal Empire. Yeah, it's, there's really only one artifact. It's, it's yeah, it's I not know. Really I'm a trying. Mystery. I'm trying not to spoil, but at the same time, you know what? Frick it. <laughs> <laughs> and the sad part is, with Cadence is sad like every single day. Is the Crystal Heart going to go kablooey and just fade away just because the princess isn't happy or something? And it's for a really petty reason. Okay, so they think you're pretty. Take it as a compliment. I know that it's not what your character is supposed to represent as a princess. But hey, it's still better than what the reviewers normally call you, at least. So deal with it. That sounded like a full review. That was a... The rage is strong with this one. (laughs) And you're just going to exploit the crap out of it, aren't you? Always. (laughs) Always. <laughs> of course. Always, always, always. Uh, and for me, this comic struck me as an attempt to make the Princess Cadence micro we never got. I always found kind of funny. She was on the covers for Celestia and Luna's micros, but not her own. Furthermore, it's been 30 issues of Friends Forever, and this is the first Cadence has been a true participant, relatively speaking. A brief cameo in uh, Shining Armor and Blue Blood. But she was off and away to do princessy things. In a certain way, I appreciate that this comic is trying to to give her a conflict of her identity. But here's the trouble with Cadence. She is a character who thinks things happen to her, things happen for her, 
But things do not happen because of her. She is the most passive character in this show. This comic in particular highlights that. Now, on a personal frustration, I wrote a, a review of this, and Cadence fans went on the warpath. They were not happy. The frustration was not that they disagree with me on Cadence. It's that they, it always became personal. It's like, this is a great comic. It's silver. I'm so disappointed in you. And you're so biased. I mean, it was not why I like Cadence. It's why I don't like you, Silver Quill. <laughs> well, and, that's sad. Ah, Sorry to hear that. And I, I asked people, okay, what, what is it you like about Cadence? And the answer was to quote every appearance she's had in the show or comics thus far. The problem with that is I've seen those appearances as well, including the expanded books, and I've taken a very different interpretation away. So even at the end of all this, I had very few nuggets for what about Cadence appeals to people. and that It's hard me. to defend Cadence in this type of case because she does act like a bit of a spoiled bride. I mean, I understand not wanting to be viewed as this one thing, but what are you going to do about it? And it, I get that you're sad, I get that you're depressed, but she's not doing anything about it. Well, that sounds like material for the actual event. So having given our first thoughts, having recounted probably what made this a more personally frustrating issue for me, uh, let's dig into the story proper. Be warned there are spoilers beyond this point. So go read the comic or don't and we can summarize it for you. <laughs> so we begin with Crystal Empire and the usual greeting between the two sisters-in-law. Hey. Hey. Who, in some ways, I feel like are more closest sisters than Shining Armor is brother to Twilight. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's all sort of, eh. It's like, here's the thing. One of the, one of the comments, uh, I got in response to my review was probably the most insightful. Cadence is meant to be the ideal big sister. Yeah, I can see that. I can, but we're, as we'll get in later, I'll readdress that, ish, that idea, but that is perhaps her main appeal. Mm-hmm. Twilight loves her as a big sister. So, Twilight's visiting, and Cadence says there's something she'd really like to do in anticipation for the, declar- the dedication of the Crystal Court. Because that is that seems to be the Crystal Empire's chief export. Big events. Yay! I think next week there's going to be a magic tournament, a really big one. Ah, that might actually sound cool. But it's not real magic, it's Magic the Gathering. And just like that, you lost. <laughs> Actually, it lost me too because I don't play that game. I've never played it. I, I played some Yu-Gi-Oh, but man, that that <laughs> didn't last long. I played the original Pokemon train card game. Oh, that's going yeah. to happen in Baltimore. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> well, anyway, Cadence and, and Twilight disguise themselves and venture incognito. Basically, they're pulling a Princess Jasmine in my eyes. Oh yeah, yeah I uh-huh. can see that too. I've, I've heard Cadence described as the Disney princess that got away. <laughs> <laughs> But so basically, they're going stall to stall, and uh, Cadence actually talks up Princess Twilight with a little giddy look on her face. She likes to she likes to hype up her sister. Can anyone imagine the guy at the first store they visit being a Russian guy? You two new to the Crystal Empire, no? Yes, new visitors. This fabric is only five bits. Where are you journeying from? Ah, the home of Princess Twilight Sparkle. She is one noble, wise, brave, resourceful pony, yes. Oh, wow, I, I completely misattributed that word bubble. I thought that was Cadence, because she's, she's in the scene where he's saying that she is just squeeing and looking yeah. so happy. I thought she was talking Twilight up, but no, the, you're right, the word bubble is pointing to the pony. That's all I was yes, looking yes, at. Yes, it is. Though, if you're going to have him Russian, all I can think of is him, him singing, I am the pony who arranges the blocks that continue to fall from Crystal Empire. <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> and it does, it may not help that there's a filly in a full Twilight Sparkle costume that looks somewhat terrifying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it really does. Princess Twilight is eating this fool's face. Oh, no. <laughs> But the minute this crystal pony starts talking about the beautiful Princess Cadence, she's, she starts to slink away. Yeah. And th- th- by this point, I'm wondering why. We are wondering why. And as we go along, we see that the merchandising, all unofficial at this fair, is just 
phenomenal. <laughs> yep. You've got costumes for the Sun Princess, the Moon Princess, the Friendship Princess, and then the Pretty Princess. Oh, wow. Yeah. <sighs> wow. Ouch. But I do have to point out that get your official crystal heart pendant. Show every pony how our heart will go on. <laughs> uh, wear it on a boat. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> uh, I'm stalling, ain't I? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm reading through. It's hard to keep up with all these stall ponies. They're just stalling for time. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, basically this is, this is a complete merchant's fair. This is almost like a brony convention. Yep. Yeah. But, uh, okay, I don't think I've had, I've seen any cosplays where the pony's costume is eating your face. Yeah. Uh, to all the cosplayers out there, that is not an invitation. <laughs> Please late. don't actually cosplay as somebody eating your face. Don't be an equestronaut. Too late. That's just quite, quite terrifying. Uh, and then they have crystal, uh, they have toys of the princesses. Again, all unofficial. I mean, could you imagine the, the dough the princesses would rake in if they released official merchandise? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, they've also got a Star Scroll the Bearded dolls on sale. <laughs> which is piled up compared to the, um, you know, other merchandise. Yep, yep. Because you can really beard, you can really brush his beard. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. That doesn't sound creepy. No. <laughs> yeah, but uh... Well it's all on sale, I'll take one. Yeah. And let's see here. And the little Phillies are saying, I want Celestia and Luna so I can raise the sun and the moon. Mm -hmm. I want Princess Tw Twilight Sparkle so I can wield the elements of harmony. And then I want Princess Cadence and Shining Armor so I can live happily ever after. While holding and a Luna doll. A Luna doll. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Well, we want Luna to live happily ever after. Oh, true. And Cadence slinks off back to the to the uh, palace. So at this point, we're all kind of wondering what's what's the deal. Yeah. Uh -huh. Clearly, anytime she comes up in marketing, uh, it bothers her. Ooh, this is very meta. Very meta. Actually, this is exceptionally meta. We'll get it. Let's tackle that in just very one second. Very meta. Mm -hmm. Because the first thing Cadence asks while she has rollers in her hair, which I admit <laughs> is a funny. Funny sight to see. I was like, no way those are natural curls. <laughs> that's all. She wonders if that's all anyone views her as, a pretty princess. Now, for me, all the princesses are being marketed for a rather superficial reason. Oh, oh Celestia raises and lowers the sun. Luna raises lower the moon. Hey, do you also want to reenact a thousand years of tragedy and separation? Oh, yeah, that too. And also Princess Twilight Sparkle with how she can control the elements of harmony. You want to activate her rainbow power form? Just at 9.99. Just at 9.99. And never mind the nervous breakdowns, the continual pressure, or the personality quirks that have, and insecurities that have come with it. Then there's me. Oh, Phillies want to reenact my wedding. Ugh. Well, that's the thing. When Cadence hit the scene, everyone viewed her as just a marketing cash in. Uh, you're mentioning about the real life people, not the pony people in the show. So, yeah, you're I mentioning still about view the real her thing. as that. I, mean, I just... don't care if this comic is trying to psych me no, out. No, that is uh, what she is. I I'm just stating. I'm just stating that. What Silver's mentioning here is the general audience, not the characters in the comics. Oh no, the the characters in the in the cartoon and comics think she's the best thing since sliced bread. Yeah, yeah. Slice sliced bread haven't been invented the week before. <laughs> yep. And here's the thing, folks have warmed up to Cadence, but in my eyes, as people have um gotten to support her more, and this is what I got from the feedback on my review. It's not so much for what she's done, it's more what they envision her. Oh, that's dangerous. Cadence? So, like Luna, in a weird sense. Like, not exactly like, but, you know, like, before season two Luna. Luna, for a long time, was headcanon-only material. She didn't reappear in season one. And so people envisioned her as this dark, broody, emotionally damaged soul. And then Luna Eclipse happens and you get this loud, boisterous, out of socially awkward. But then people rolled with that. And Luna has gotten episodes that have fleshed her out more. Yeah, and if you're including the Andy Price and Kitty Cook comic, Luna's just insane. 
Yes, I, I'm still glad they. I'm glad they toned that down a lot. Oh, I love that yeah. one. I, I love that. But Cadence has not had those appearances, mm-hmm. and a lot of fans are doing as they did, as we did for Luna early on in the show. They've they've created their own ideas of what Cadence is. But here's the problem, folks. I, I can't see into your mind. I can't view Cadence the same way because in a way, because she is sort of a vessel for people to envision their ideals. Silver, has anyone referred to a fan fiction to, for you to read, to get the general idea on what they envision Cadence as? Mm, if they did, I was lost in a sweep. This was a blitzkrieg of people being very upset mm. that I didn't. I find it so funny. They they accuse me of being biased against her. I was like, well, you had no problem when I was biased for characters you liked. Yep, true. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm not your mouthpiece, mouthpiece, but uh I can't celebrate Cadence on what other fans envision she could be. I'd like to have a grounding in the show. Luna got more fun when we saw her struggle to win Pony's approval in the actual show. Cadence, everyone loved her from the get-go. So much so, and this is, this is really what killed it for me. That scene where, where Applejack says, come on y'all, let's go comfort the princess. And they all leave Twilight in tears alone. I understand their anger. They had every right to be angry at Twilight's poor behavior. But the fact that they went to Twilight's brother's wedding after Twilight herself had been exiled, that's the show saying, this princess is so awesome, the main six would sell out their own friend for a place in her wedding. That's how that's how awesome she is. That's why you should like her. And I think, no, you just tried to boost her character at the expense of the main characters. For Cadence to look good, everyone else has to be brought low? That's a terrible dynamic. At the same time, too, that was Queen Chrysalis in disguise. So, yeah. It, it doesn't matter. Even her imposter... They ponies arbitrarily like Cadence more. So even if you're an, a, a very poor imposter, apparently they'll pick you over their best friend. I mean, what? So, yeah, that has led to some bitterness. And unfortunately, I can't say Cadence has had a moment in the spotlight to really... Evolve? S- evolve. A lot of things have happened. A lot of things have tested her physically, like staying up to to protect the Crystal Empire. But emotionally, nothing has challenged her spirit. Nothing has challenged her beliefs. It's Even o- this doesn't really challenge her, like, in the comic, like, at the very end of the comic, which we can get back to, and I can expand upon that, but... Yes, I am I am pontificating quite a bit about... Yeah. But anyway, yeah. to sum up my, my somewhat windy tirade, Cadence hasn't had a chance to show her best in the show. I feel like fans are conflicted over what they vision she could be versus, versus what we're presented. And thus we get into Cadence's presentation. Because the next day, Crystal Empire alarm clocks are really harsh. At least you will wake up. I guess so, mm-hmm. but you're gonna be, you're gonna have a ringing in your ears throughout the rest of the day. Bas- basically, it's a trumpet right in your ear. If I were Twilight, that guard would be playing that horn out at the other end. <laughs> oh my. And then we get to have shining armor. Yay! Finally, we get to see the big bro. Hi, Jock Horse. Is he a Jock Horse? I mean, he, he, the nerd aspect has increased with him more and more over time. Yeah. Meh. I like for, him. Meh. meh? Is that for you? Meh. Okay. Aww. Wow. The, now that we've gone from rage to meh, I'm not sure which is which is more painful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So basically, Cadence did not sleep well. So she's looking a bit like she did during uh, the Crystal Empire's return or after Flurry Heart's birth. Flurry Heart, by the way, is, I think this is set before Flurry's birth. Oh, yeah, yeah this is before Flurry. So here's where we're getting full meta. Cadence asks, am I really just a pretty princess figurehead? According to Hasbro, yes, you are. I'm afraid that's how I still view her, yes. Until- yeah, I I've got nothing else to say on that. I agree. <laughs> I'm afraid until she can really step up and and make something happen truly by her own will. Honestly, the way I look at Cadence here, she's a pretty... Her, her characteristics not flush out. All we know about her is that she is a wife, an older sister, a mother, and technically she's very perfect. There's nothing wrong with her. There's no 
conflict that's going on with her. And I know people are going to cite fan fictions and whatnot, but that doesn't count because what we get in show is basically, well, I do like your headcanon theory, Silver, about her being a adrenaline junkie. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> well, that, well, honestly, that was me just trying to add a quirk. Uh, it's amazing how a quirk can, for lack of a better term, humanize a character. Yeah, and I, I do, mm-hmm. I do agree with that, but I don't really think the show people agree with that, and we don't see more of that, even in the Discord episode. What was that one called? Uh, Dungeons and Discord? No. Oh, uh, th- Three's a Crowd. Yeah, even in Three's a Crowd. You I not- actually love that episode. <laughs> yeah, even in that episode. You notice how she reacted to Discord. And she was kind of playing along with all of Discord's thing. Like she- Antics. Yeah, she was like humoring him and not really being angry with the whole thing. Not like Twilight. You You really got a reaction out of Twilight, but not her. But basically, Cadence needs a little assurance, and Twilight says, well, you know, you you saved the Crystal Empire from Sombra. And Cadence perhaps rightly points out, you saved the Crystal Heart. Twilight was the one who got, went through the mental scarring. I mean, this is this is the thing that always keeps me from cheering for Cadence. Every time she has a moment of triumph, it's like ten ponies set it up for her to get the win. But at the same time, too, you can attribute to that to teamwork because it takes a team to complete a goal. The Great Wall was not built by one man. Was not, but do you notice that it's Cadence who gets all the credit for the win? Mm-hmm. So well, that, at least... that's the disproportionate thing as well. But at the same time, too, didn't Spike got the glorious um, credit, too, for that one? He got the statue, Cadence got the, got the throne. Yeah, but still, everybody respected Spike. Uh. Spike the Great and Powerful. Yep, yep. Which is funny. He Maybe he should move there from Ponyville. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. I don't agree with that because if he moved there, he'll be having a huge ego, so no. <laughs> also, he'd probably devour half the Crystal Empire. I'll true that. Oh, yeah. Ooh, maybe that should be a Friends Forever. Spike and Cadence trying to break his, <laughs> his gem addiction. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'll be cool. Anyway. Uh, so now it's time for Cadence to hold court. Basically, to have ponies discuss things. Uh, and Twilight says, oh, I should watch this. Sooner or later, ponies in Ponyville will want to uh, to come to me to settle disputes. It's not like there's a mayor who could hear their problems. Well, or... that's town problem. This is friendship problem. Eh, we don't... I don't know. These don't seem very friendly. <laughs> These ponies. Uh, basically... First, the two stall ponies from the other day are are arguing over their wares, and Cadence just, Bleh. she's like, "Uh, here, Twilight, you deal with it." And this is the part where I am just baffled by Cadence's reaction here, and why is she doing this? Because the argument that they're having does not even relate to Cadence and how they see her as a pretty pony. All This part here just threw me for a loop. Like, Cadence, are you okay? Are you, are you having mental issues? Because um, I think you're taking things out of context where there's not even context to begin with. And can we just mention how she throws it on Twilight after complaining about how the crystal ponies don't respect her enough? You're not helping here. Can we also admire the brass pair on these two stallions? They're coming in and asking her to sell a dispute on the unofficial merchandise of her they're trying to sell. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. That takes some chutzpah. Yeah, but at the same time here, too, I mean, why is Cadence feeling this way? I mean, I'm still stuck up on this because Cadence, they're arguing about... About their wares. They're not arguing about how pretty you are or how even prettier one thing after the other. Like, no, you're pretty. No, I think she's pretty. No. <laughs> They're not even arguing about that. Because that would be ridiculous. Then again, it can't be even more ridiculous than the uh, next dispute. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. The, the guard ponies and who's eating the lunch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> now, I admit... Okay, Shining Armor kind of took it upon himself because, yeah, that's kind of a thing that didn't need to be Dressing settled princess, with yeah. the princess. Like, you know what? I... Yeah, I understand. No. Like, that, that's supposed to be taken in personally before you bring it up. Like, with 
getting the princess involved, it has to be really, really something big for the princess to be involved. And it really isn't. And that's like... Mm. Yeah, and I can see why Cadence here is feeling like she's just the joke. Like she's just the butt of the joke. And I can see why. Personally, because think... her subjects are really, really stupid? Uh, the guard, yes. But the... Vendor ponies, they're, they need to, what's the word I'm looking for? Get it settled. So, um, getting a higher power to settle it for them would be really good. But. Oh, mediation. Yeah, mediation. Yes. Also, also minor complaint with the art. The coloring should have been pinkish purple, not blue. For who? For the, uh, magic aura. Like. <clears throat> Who's. Cadence has blue aura. Ah, Shining armor has yeah. purple. You're talking about the guard scene. Yes, yes. Uh, that one is a derp. I do agree on that one. But That's literally the rest of my complaints. <laughs> you didn't get the color right. But this is an honest mistake because the rule of how unicorn magic aura is um, based on their eye color only except oh, Cadence oh, we're, and... We're, we're, Sorry, go ahead. We're having... We're gonna start this debate. Oh, well, I mean, true. Because if you take a look see at Ra- Sweetie Belle, um, her magic aura is green. Yeah, yeah. But also look at um, uh, Princess Celestia. Her eye color is purple, but she reads. She wields yellow magic. Because she raises the sun. So maybe moon. it could also amount to the cutie mark. Here's here's what I've observed. Mm-hmm. Because this has actually come up. This actually came up in one of my video reviews. Mm-hmm. First tier characters and and second tier are often their magic or a match their cutie mark. Twilight has violet eyes, but her magic is more of a magenta, like the star on her flank. Mm-hmm. Rarity has blue eyes and a blue cutie mark. Kind of hard to tell. Cadence, well, it's light blue mm. on her cutie mark. But even so, her aura could match eye or cutie mark. It's hard to say. Mm. Celestia and Cadence... They match their cutie marks as well, but all the background characters, all the third tiers, their magic usually matches their eye color. Probably because the cutie marks themselves are interchangeable, so the eye color helps consistency. Mm-hmm. So that's what I've observed. Oh, that's a good observation. That's a, all right. That's a, that's a unique Discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe that's for another day. <laughs> I love how we discuss like colors and magic rather than this. <laughs> well, basically because that's a little more certain. Cadence is the embodiment of uncertainty, especially as uh, she shuts down the disputes after just two, mm-hmm. and then ducks out of tea with Phillies. Oh, but she does bring up a point about uh, what did she say? Uh, tea party. What's wrong with me? Uh, I don't. I don't want those feelings growing up thinking that being pretty and living happily ever after is all they can aspire. So what do I do? Throw a tea party? It's like, it's, I do see her point here, but at the same time too, you have to remember your position. You have to remember a few things where you're the crystal princess entertaining little feelings, which I'm guessing children. And believe it or not, at Everfree Northwest, Princess Celestia herself, Nicole Oliver, entertained children by reading them stories where little children under the age of 12, I think, are read stories by her. And adults are not allowed to go there except for parents. So, what's wrong, Cadence? What's wrong with entertaining little children with tea parties? Not to mention we've seen Princess Celestia and Luna host tea parties and sleepovers. Oh yeah, that's true. Mm Mm-hmm. I, that's probably what's missing from this comic. Cadence is berating herself for not living up to some ideal, but she never really expresses what that ideal is. What is a princess supposed to do? Yeah, and the problem with her herself is that, okay, she's the crystal princess. She's also the princess of love. And how do you deal with love? Like, what is love? Baby, don't Baby, hurt me. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. But still, like, what, what does that mean? At least friendship, you get a general idea of what that can be. And love could be a subset of friendship, but even more, but... Uh, or friendship could be a subset of love. True, that too. 
But, come and get your love. Oh, no, come on. If you sing that song, I'm going to want to dance through alien relics. <laughs> hey, 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 what's the matter with you? Hey, what? It's a much better song than this comic will ever be. <laughs> Dang, girl. I'm, <laughs> I'm long winded, but you're rocking the rage train. Also, we, we neglected one very important thing. The, the true identity of the lunch thief for Ooh. those guards. I blame Flash Sentry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can agree. Who, by the way, does not appear in this comic. Yay! I think, I don't know. Yeah. What's his popularity in the fandom like again? At this point? Uh, he, there are Is plenty... he still the waifu stealer that we all thought he was back in 2014? I don't know. I mind. think a lot of people have, have much like Cadence, they've developed a... A fan identity for him <laughs> as Twilight's future husband. I, I don't mind that concept. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I think there's less venom directed towards him as there was. But at the dedication of the Crystal Court, all the Crystal Ponies are gathered around to be all crystally crystal crystal tin. I'm so sick of this one adjective. <laughs> Crystals. No wonder Sabra want to crack at this place. It's like his, his dream job. It's crystal galore, and I love it. <laughs> But, but people, well, honestly, Agnes Garboska did the artwork for this. And she does a beautiful job, but the crystal ponies are perhaps not the best subject for her. Her coloring style, style is very soft. And watercolory? Yes, very watercolory. A lot of very subtle shadows that create, it creates a beautiful piece overall, but elements don't necessarily stand out. I mean, even seeing the crystal heart in that crowd of ponies takes a minute to focus. Crystals demand sharper, brighter colors to demand your attention. And lots of gradients. Let's not forget that. So, well, well, I think Agnes really features more gradients in her artwork than any other artist for this comic line. Hmm. So, yeah, good point. So I feel like the artwork is not... The artwork is by no means bad, but I feel like this is not the right topic for it. So... But speaking of feeling bad, at the Crystal Court, here comes Cadence, who has been crying so much that her non-existent mascara is running? <laughs> Apparently. I mean, there's a question. How much of Cadence do we see is really makeup? Well, I think mascara is kind of an essential for the pretty ladies. Well, mascara. Oh boy, mascara. It can be subtle, it's mostly meant to make, like, eyelashes look fuller and thicker, depending on which brand you want. Like, some make, like, eyelashes look longer, while others make it look more fuller and darker. What you're thinking of to make, like, the, you know, the thickness is eyeliner. Liquid eyeliner, oh boy. Which I don't think she's wearing. Okay, well, what what is causing those dark smudges under her eyes other than perhaps an odd oil bath with actual crude oil? Well, mascara does run. Right. It really does. Like, even though it's subtle, it does have a tendency to run because most of the time mascara is pure black. Let's just Ooh. roll with mascara for now. Let's roll with mascara. You know what else is turning black? The crystal heart. Oh, uh, yep. It's darkening, it's dimming, all the crystal ponies. All this because Cadence is having a bad day. She feels she doesn't deserve this this honor of a crystal court. Yeah, huh? Which, and that's another thing that bothers me. The fact that Cadence's emotions are tied to this crystal heart. I mean, let's go back to, like, Teen Titans, like, Raven and Starfire, like, during this one episode where they had to switch bodies, mm -hmm. or whatever, because Puppet Master. There was this one scene where Starfire was trying to control Raven's body and her powers, which are tied to her emotions. The reason why Raven is so monotone is because she keeps her emotions in check. Now... If Cadence is as emotional as, you know, like right now, oh boy, the Crystal Empire could be at the stake of a state of chaos every month or so. Oh <laughs> my gosh, you went there. I yes, I went there. I I'm a girl, I can go there. I know, you're letting your feelings flow. Yeah. 
<laughs> I, I, I would give more credit to her than that, but I, she, she's not giving a good... Maybe the reason why she's so boring is because she knows she has to keep her emotions in check. Oh, <laughs> oh someone's really giddy. Well, I think we found I found a way to pierce her rage. Mm-hmm. Uh. Although this this is also something about the Crystal Empire that has always driven me a little batty. <laughs> it's it's always the light and love with these ponies. What do they what do they do for a job? Get a job, you hippies. <laughs> no, I like hippies. But he, here's the thing: the Crystal Empire slogan is "Be happy or die." <laughs> because. If they have a bad day, the frozen North claims them. <laughs> uh, and that just strikes me as so stupid. Well, if, you, well, if, if I have a bad day, I want to have the freedom to be a little mopey and just work through it. I don't want to have to worry about a blizzard coming through my window and freezing me to death just because I stubbed my toe. I think that's the extreme... <laughs> reaction to it but honestly i don't think that is the case because having a bad day yes you can have a bad day once in a while but if everybody in the crystal empire feels sad or bad like which is happening right now um things are going to go to the frozen north but as a nation sometimes you gotta deal with the bad games ponies play what if they hadn't gotten the equestria games would they have all died from the cold because they didn't get what they wanted no, I mean, they move, they move on. Come on, like, give them more credit I, than I, that. I can't. These these ponies are so eh, shallow. I mean, I just think of the episodes they've been in and how the slightest thing makes them disappointed, but also the smallest thing distracts them. <laughs> re- remember when a crystal pony saw Sombra rising and Rarity distracted him with a gift? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, y'all need a little riddle in, I think. But I, I don't know, I mean, to me, your guys' reaction to that is a bit extreme. I need to see some Crystal Ponies really tough it out. Yeah, but at the same time, too, you haven't seen them being really, really sad, so... Yeah. Oh, I've seen, I've seen them as sad. First first appearance, they, oh, wow. Yeah, a come whole, on. T- a whole city of PTSD. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, but we're talking about Cadence, who is definitely a more emotional uh, character, but that emotion is going to get them all killed. Mm -hmm. And this is where I want to revisit the idea that Cadence is the ideal big sister, because Twilight flashes back to all the fun and love she has for Cadence when they were young, and still has. That's where I think the ideal big sister aspect comes in. But if you notice that in their more adult years, it's Cadence who's always calling a Twilight for help. One fan put forth the idea that if Twilight was having a bad day, Cadence is the kind of pony who would pull up uh, a, a tray of treats, pour some tea for her, and they just talk it out all night, mm-hmm. all all day. I can you know, bite that. I can too, but why have we not gotten to see that? Every Their entire relationship in the show and comics since their foalhood has been, Twilight, help! Nothing is so frustrating as untapped potential. Yeah, that, that's the thing there where I have to agree with you. It's under potential. And honestly, to that fan who gives you that idea, I like it. I buy it. It's one of those things where, yeah, I can see this happening because, well, Cadence here is like a big sister to Twilight. And if Twilight has a bad day, sure, I can see the cookie tray come out, milk, and then a board game or even some crazy thing with um something comes into play, like maybe Yahtzee. Why would zero punctuation be there? <laughs> I don't know. But unfortunately, that's something we as fans envision. It's not something we've gotten to see yet. Yeah, and that's the missed opportunity there, because if we get to see that, that would be really awesome. But now with um, Flurry Heart being involved, I don't think so we're going to get that. Safi, you want to chime in? Are you asking me what like uh, I would like to see envisioned for Cadence's character? That's a good question. What would you like to see envisioned? Well, it's kind of hard because I don't really think much of Cadence, like, you know, as a character. I don't think she's human enough for me. So anything to give her a bit more of a 
humanization, personification, anything to give me some aspect that this is an actual person that could live. Like, I've had, I've met people that sort of represent these characters that I've come to be accustomed to over the years, but if I can find somebody who acts like Cadence and doesn't frustrate me as a person, I would greatly appreciate that or something. Something to make Cadence more interesting as a character. I'm done. Like I a, think I scrambled on. Like because I'm not sure what I want. Like an adrenaline addiction? Huh? Huh? I buy it. Yeah, like exactly like that. I would actually love to see Cadence try and pumple some ponies. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Princess of Vicious Beat Down. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yes. But here's our climax. It's basically Twilight saying, uh, I'm just going to read the word bubble. They look up to you because you are kind, thoughtful, accessible, and accepting of every pony. Because you are full of love and light, which makes them feel that way. Guys, I'm sorry, but that is... I could read that description on the back of my toy box. Yeah, and honestly, okay. I buy it. Like, I can buy that description of Cadence. I'm pretty sure the writer was uh, having a hard time trying to figure out what to do with that ending dialogue. Is probably why it's so cheap as it is. Uh, I won't say that. Christina Rice's work has always been good. This is one Yeah, of... but at the same time, it's kind of hard to write for Cadence. I that think that was the also... best you could come up with. That is also true. I can feel that this is... How do I put this? I can feel that Hasbro commissioned IDW to create a comic where write Cadence in a good light. And they had to pull strings for this one. Well, it it is hard. Cadence is often presented as unflappable. That nothing has really brought her down. Physically challenged, but not emotionally tested, like I said earlier. Mm-hmm. And without that, character drama is usually, oh, you know, what makes characters involving is that they are overcoming something. If a character has nothing to overcome, then what do you do to create a conflict? In this case, it, it was have Cadence shut down. And so with this pep talk, the crystal heart is restored. Cadence feels more like a, a princess and ruler. But if you notice that the message is not, oh, you can do this to change, you can become better, it's that... You're already awesome, don't change anything. Once again, at this point of the comic, it's frustrating because it feels like Cadence hasn't learned anything throughout this experience other than, oh, if you're sad, then the Crystal Empire will die or some crap like no, that. No, I, I would say well, that... Well, she didn't learn that, but... <laughs> no, I, I, How do I explain this? It's the message to everyone else, keep her happy or we'll all die. No, I, would say, <laughs> I, I would say that she did learn a lesson here because... Honestly, she feels she feels underappreciated, and she there feels... is no lesson that she learned though. From this point, she's just learning. Oh, I'm not sad anymore because my feelings. This is how Cadence is in a nutshell. My feelings. Well, ah! this is where I have to disagree with you, Safi, because the end here is a statement where she's realizing that what she does is already a good thing because she herself is a good influence to the empire and well okay her being the pretty princess her having a good life her just being pretty well who doesn't want to be all of those things people kind of want to latch onto it but when they grow up or when they grow older obviously they have their own thing to strive for this is just like what silver mentioned before um the big sister mentality kind of thing where she's there for you. If you have problems, you can just open up to her and she'll help you. That's the ideal. Again, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it in practice. Yes. Uh, Yeah. And also after Cadence has her turn around, the heart gets better. Twilight gets the, the um, dealers to change the costume to the crystal princess saying that's Cadence's true identity. I guess there's one other thing I haven't, Harped on, and I'll keep this short. That's, yeah, I kind of wanted to harp on this, too. So go ahead, be my guest. Cadence is the most princessy of the princesses in the sense that she's the classic fairy tale. The thing about the fairy tale princesses, however, is that 
there was never a call to action for them. I, I joked with my friend uh, Cruelka about this last night as she bought a Lego Disney princess uh, set. Oh. oh, God. What set was it? Beauty and the Beast. She loves that movie. It's Mine is the Stockholm Syndrome. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I had to make that joke. But the thing about the princess, especially the Disney princess line, is that you take these these grand characters, you know, they become more assertive, more independent. And then they're sort of reduced to just pretty princesses and pretty dresses who sing about love. Mm-hmm. Well, one thing mm-hmm. more, there's always that. And, uh, well, even, actually, I'm not even sure they want more anymore. Uh, don't you remember um, Ariel? Then she got it, and I don't know if she wanted more after. Oh, yeah, there's that. my thing is with the with the classic princess. There's never a call to action. There's never a call to better yourself or better the world. It's it's basically look pretty, be nice, and good things will happen for you. But again, not because of you. Thank you. That summarizes everything I wanted to say in a nutshell that I couldn't enunciate. So, and unfortunately, because Cadence is leading the, it's funny that in A Anything, they didn't want to use the term happily ever after because that's too final. But that is basically what they're doing. I don't know. I mean, the Nay Anything, to me, that feels like, okay, it's their end of their journey as a couple. They, they, the hardship that they faced getting together, that, that ended there. Now, the real challenge of, Dating. Oh, that's a scary thought. Oh, joy. Which they never... No, we skipped, we skipped the dating and went right to marriage. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which, you know... Actually, you know what? I used to think that was odd, but I saw the original Manchurian Candidate last night. Oh? Do you know how many people... Their speed dating is not breakneck, it's liquefy. Do explain. Oh, several characters. One guy meets a girl on a, on a train while he's having a nervous breakdown. And within a couple of months, they're get, they're engaged. The actual Manchurian candidate, he met a girl who saved him from a snake bite and promptly asked her to marry him that afternoon. <laughs> okay. Same afternoon. I was like, wow, you people are impatient. Sounds like an anime show. And my friends are laughing at my reactions. So I'm, I'm just like, what? <laughs> and, so, and so I guess Cadence and Shining Armor actually took a little bit more time. Oh, yeah. Uh, kudos to them for getting to know one another, I assume. But I'm just like, what? (laughs) So that is an odd comparison. I'm comparing My Little Pony to the Manchurian Candidate. (laughs) Oh, you. Again, I've never really seen their love tested. They've never been tempted to stop loving one another. This is why I want the princess archetype to be more than just look pretty and be nice. I want to know kids have an inspiration that is not just fill in your own character here. If Games of Shining had two different ways on how to help the Crystal Ponies interact with the rest of the world, you know, get them up to speed, and it leads to disagreement and they're having trouble, and then, okay, sure, Twilight comes in to help mediate things or get them talking. Sometimes you just need help. There you go. There's an episode for you. There's a comic idea. Mm-hmm. I can see. I, I can see that. I can agree on that idea. But what we get here... Like the end of the comic, that resolution with oh, um, Crystal Princess costume, yay done, and Cadence feels good. Eh, to me it's a rush job. It is. It's it's basically she feels good. The day is saved. We're not gonna die. <laughs> uh, Pretty much overall. I'm guessing final thoughts in order because I think we have a lot of to say for this comic as a whole. We do. It's it is time to wrap things up. We're at the end of the comic. We've pontificated on Cadence's role in the show quite a bit. So, Safi. My final thoughts. The comic had such a good premise going for it. If I was given the assignment, I would have gone with a different route of handling how Cadence would have gone in this, uh, you know, I would make sure that she would actually grow and learn from this instead of being mopey and then just getting whatever she wanted. That idea in itself sort of frustrates me. Like, I would have her grow as a pony or a person, whatever you want to call her, instead of, you know, making her be mopey and then getting whatever she wanted. Those are my thoughts anyway. Norman, what are your thoughts? Hmm. Well, this comic started off 
okay, but that middle part dipped down really hard, and the ending was tacked on. I won't say that this is bad, far from it. This was just okay. Not even meh, but it was just okay. It kind of opened up ideas for stories on how it should have ended kind of deal. There's so much potential that could have been done. And fanfic writers go ahead and try and do a great story out of this one. But miss opportunities. There's so much that could have been done, especially for cadence. And the appearance of Shining Armor was just a few pages in. But, oh god, like, the the poor guy needs his own issue, man. Like, he needs something stronger than what we got here. Alrighty. And for myself, I, I share Norman's frustration that there's nothing so fr- hard as a missed opportunity. That there's there's potential. Cadence has always been full of potential for stories. And part of the frustration I have with her character is that those seem to go untapped. This is a comic that tries to redefine Cadence, but while it's it draws attention to how she's been presented. Beautiful, uh, privileged, li- leading the fairy tale life, but not necessarily challenged. But when her reaction to that challenge is to shut down and withdraw, we never get to see her at her strongest. We never see her rally. Instead, we get Twilight telling us why she's great. And the old adage, show, don't tell, it has more meaning when a character shows their best qualities rather than having everyone else give her a pep talk. Cadence has been around for a while now. Folks are getting more used to her. But if this keeps up, I just, I don't hate her character, but I just have no interest in it. I just feel like, okay, this character is present. That's it. And unfortunately, I I will gladly celebrate a day when I think this changes, but we're not there yet. Yeah, I don't mind being proven wrong. Like, this is one of those situations where prove me wrong. Show me that Cadence is one of those awesome characters where I'll be happy to see her on screen. I'll gladly eat crow for that. Why a crow? What, what, you got the anti-crowite? No, that's that's the phrase, right? Eat crow? Well, that seems unfair. What a pigeon's not good enough for you? I don't eat you. <laughs> but anywho, that about concludes our our discussion of Friends Forever number thirty, which I'm sure we'll revisit this down the line at some point when we list favorite or least favorite comics. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, I think Somehow. it's about time before we continue on with the Friends Forever line because we are. Well, we technically are catching up really fast in the Friends Forever line because um, what do we have? Uh, we have a total of 32 issues, was it? Yeah, 32 yep. issues and climbing. So I, I think we're mm-hmm. going to take a break for a while from the Friends Forever and probably focus on the main line or probably a discussion because people like us discussing stuff. What was the last comic we reviewed in the main series? Uh, I think it was the one where... Um, Spike and Twilight. Oh, the where they how they first met. And, oh, right, that one. And why Celestia? She is a quirk. She's a psychopath. Yep. Yeah. Because she makes a fool take care of a baby dragon. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh lord. Although for our next podcast, shall we return to the main TV show? Oh yeah, that, that is always fun. And so we're gonna have Night of the Living Yay. Oh yay! With, <laughs> with twenty eight pranks later. Great. Cookie. Uh, there's so much reference I could do. Let's see, Resident Evil, House of the Dead. Oh, I'm so Zombie giddy. Land. I'm so giddy. <laughs> so we will see you guys again next week for a hopefully not brainless podcast. <laughs> but if we are all bring cookies to it, I won't fault anyone. Um. Okay. So for the NBS show, I have been Cecilia Quill. And I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Sapphire Hartsong. And we're saying adios. See ya. Bye-bye. Cookies! That's next week's thing. <laughs> I don't care.